the GTX 1050, NVIDIA's aged low-end graphics card. Today we find out if this 2GIG model can hold up against 7 of today's most popular Steam games. We'll use low settings to try to get the best playable experience for each title. I don't expect much from this card, especially since it doesn't even have an external power supply, but we'll try anyway. First up, we hold no punches going straight into Cyberpunk 2077. At 720p low settings, there's a somewhat playable experience with average frames per second at 37 and 1% lows around 29 FPS. It doesn't look too bad, but there is a noticeable lack of smoothness at this frame rate. Once we add FSR 3 with frame generation, however, things get interesting. We average 73 frames per second and the lows only dip to 52 FPS. It looks good and is just as playable with bearable latency. Who knew this little card could survive the cyberpunk test? Just barely. Next up we have Path of Exile 2, another demanding title. In the red veil at 720p low settings, we average 37 frames per second and 30 on the 1% lows. Not exactly a stellar performance. The experience doesn't get much better when we turn on FSR getting 41 frames per second average and 33 for the 1% lows. You definitely need a better card for this game. It's somewhat playable but a little muddy on the visuals. Now Delta Force runs well on a lot of cards, let's see what it can do here. Coming in at 1080p low settings you can see we come close to a very playable 53 frames per second average and around 40 frames per second for the 1% low. We drop the resolution down to just 900p with FSR. This gives us the sweet spot with average frames in the high 80s and low 90s and 1% lows at 60 frames per second. The 1050 powers through this test with some ease. Another game surely to tax the 1050 is Marvel Rivals, and it did not fare well at all getting just 28 frames per second in 720p low and 22 frames per second for the 1% lows. FSR added another 8 or so frames, but glitches kept us from capturing it properly. Another title with some issues on such a low-end video card. For our fifth test, a little bit of an older title, PUBG, but it's still top 5 on the Steam chart, so we'll throw it in the mix. With some heavy stutters and a second or two freeze here or there, we steal 54 frames per second average at 1080p medium settings. These settings were hitting the limits of the 2 gigs of VRAM and things got bad during those instances with some game freezing. 720p medium settings were actually totally playable with 60 frames per second average with 1% lows only hitting 53. We did see the VRAM limits hit again a couple times during the menus and certain animations however. Setting everything to low would most likely give this game a complete passing grade though we left the test for the next game. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. We didn't realize this game wouldn't even run as it requires ray tracing and more VRAM. A 3060 or higher is what I recommend for this. Moving on, our final test is a quick fight in Jedi Fallen Order. At 720 low settings, it fails short at only 35 frames per second average with lows at 26 frames per second. Surprisingly, the game looks, feels, and plays pretty smoothly with fight scenes not even feeling too sluggish at all. If you don't mind lower frame rates, this game is a pass on the playable or not scale for the 1050. For a near decade old graphics card, the GTX 1050 is a hit or miss when it comes to playing newer and popular titles. The overall average throughout all the games we tested was 30 frames per second. This falls in line with the Furmark score as well, which came in at exactly 30 frames per second. The VRAM was a limiting factor on a couple titles and showed its age with slowdowns and freezing. So if you have one of these low-end 1050s, it's not too late to sell it on eBay for around $50 and get yourself a slight upgrade to possibly a GTX 1088 gig for around $100. Thanks so much for watching. Please tap the like and sub buttons. Happy gaming and I love you people.